Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making three linen hand sewn aprons. Let's get started. So I have um, an assortment of aprons to make today. We're going to start here with this blue striped linen from Burnley and Trowbridge. So for the striped linen, we're going to be working on the workwoman's guide. Um, we're going to be using plate 11 figure 10. It's just a simple half apron. It's under the term common aprons on page 76. It says this is the simplest shape and the one most in use. It is either plated or gathered to a band, which is about a nail deep. These aprons are usually worn by all servants and women while at work. Blue, check, and brown linen are most used for scouring and cleaning. White linen, holland, and print for less dirty employments. Ladies wear them of silk and muslin with or without pockets. So we're going to make a blue linen apron. Seemed logical to me. So first thing off, I ripped the top edge so it's nice and straight. So I have this. Um, I need it to be 38 and a half inches long, um, measured over my dress. So I just wanted it not to be as long as my dress and certainly not longer than my dress, but within a couple of inches of the hem so it actually protects the gown. And then of course you need to add things like seam allowance and hem. Okay, so there's that. I'll iron that in a moment. That's the actual apron part. Now it does say that most aprons, it doesn't say in that one how wide the apron should be. Um, in the part where it explains about aprons, it says they're usually a breadth wide. It does say that um, a lot of times the breadths are about a yard. This is more than that, it's like 57 inches wide. But I'd rather be too wide than too narrow, and I want to use a selvages so I don't have to do, turn up the ends. So I think it's more of a do we do it the way they did it, or should we make it to the specifications? Um, because specifications means I would have to cut this almost in half, and I'd have to hem up the sides. But I don't think they would have hemmed up the sides if they were using the selvages. I think the purpose of using the selvages is so you wouldn't have to hem up the sides. So it's more of a, a which way do you go type of thing, because it's hard to find linen in the 36 inch widths. Um, that's, you know, stripe and that sort of thing. So that was a personal decision. I decided to do it the way they would have done it as opposed to make it to the specifications. And I'm going to plate it down anyway, um, or gather it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to plate this one. Or pleat, basically. Um, and they say plate, so I get used to calling it that. So yeah, um, that was my personal decision. Someone else may make a different decision for them. That's fine. All right, let's cut a waistband. It says a nail wide. Alright, I'm going to go iron those pieces and then we shall start probably with the hem. Hem is turned up. Uh, the actual common apron description does not say how high to turn the hem up, but in other ones it states very specifically a deep hem of three quarters of a nail wide, which turns out to be roughly uh, between one and a half inches and one three quarters inches. I just went with one three quarters inches because it was easier. So, um, turn that up, and then now I'm just stitching away. Alright, we are pleating the waist down. I'm not measuring at all. I am just using that stripe as kind of a guide. Taking the waistband and stitching it to the apron itself with a back stitch. Back stitch started out really small. Now that I'm, now that I'm nearing towards the end, it's getting a little, little big. Probably 20 stitches per inch at the very beginning, and now I'm like at eight. Um, the work homeless guide shows the waistband, and then it shows ties that are different than the waistband. And I don't know if they're made out of the same fabric and just made narrower. But for this one, I'm going to just use some linen t tape that I have. Alright, 
I'm going to take my tape, pull out my ties. these corners out. Let's sew that up and we'll be done with this one. Wait, I had a needle. There it is. Second apron. So this is more linen from Burnley and Trowbridge. This is a beautiful brown linen check. It's gorgeous. We're going to try and make a pinner apron out of it, but I think I only bought enough fabric for a regular apron. So we're going to see. And measure out. Maybe this one a little bit shorter, maybe 36 inches. We're gonna have enough. We'll be good. I don't know where my good scissors are, but uh, just got to make do with these. I think, because I can't really tell on the engraving, the directions don't say. So, like, normally I would cut two bibs and I would sew them together, turn them inside out. But I think I'm just going to hem this one. So I'm going to cut it at 15 inches. So again, I need a two nail and another inch for seam allowance. Actually, not an inch. We're going to do um, a check for a seam. So I'll just sew against the check. So I could be adding pockets to these aprons. But when I'm cooking, I really don't find myself needing a pocket for my apron. Because I have pockets underneath my dress. Okay, those pieces. I'm going to hem this down and go ahead and fold up the hem on the on the apron front. I'm going to go ahead and prep the waistband as well. So I've just been folding it on the pleat or on the uh, check and folding it over so there's no measuring involved, which is kind of why I like the checks. Alright, here's the hem that we're going to be doing a running stitch on, just the same as before. I'm going to finish up on this bib real quick. Just doing this uh, little hem here. Now we're sewing these ends. We're also going to put in a tie. Not that one. That one's already attached to the other end. Checks are really easy to do because you can use the checks as your seam allowance. You get a perfectly straight seam allowance. You can use it as your pleating guide. You get super nice pleats. You can use it as your hem guide so you don't have to measure a hem. It's just really nice. I'm going to take our string, pull it out. Corners, which can sometimes be difficult. That's good enough for now. All right, I'm gonna finish pinning together this waistband right where it belongs. Then I have the yoke um, pinner part here. And I'm just going to lay it over top. So that when I whip this together, I'll catch all the layers. I gotta find where I put my thread. I thought I brought it over here. Alright, found the thread. And also lost my needle, but I found that had it pinned to my shirt. And we're just going to attach the pinner part while we do the waistband. We're going to do all the layers. 
same exact thing except now in white. So I ripped myself a straight edge, which is really hard to do on linen, honestly, but I managed it. Don't suggest it, but it's easier than trying to cut something that's you know solid. Hemming. Well, this one I'm kind of just guesstimating a seam allowance. It's an apron, it really won't matter. This. I'm going to go ahead and put this where it needs to be. Seam allowance, fold in half. That's where the center of that thing needs to go. Waistband, so I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. In fact, I need to finish sewing this first. Find the center of my pinner part. Match it up to the center on here. Very last step. I'll go put on a dress and we'll try these on. All right, so dress is on. Let's put on some aprons. We're gonna start with this one. So this is the first one we made. It's not going to look great with this dress because it's all blue, but it's okay. It's the only work dress I have for right now. Ties and ties. There we go. So it's a nice width around. Um, I'm more of a front wiper, so this is perfectly fine. But if I you know, grab it sides, it's, it's fine too. So, yep, it's a nice length. It's a few inches shorter than my dress. I'll put this down so y'all can see. In my modern shoes, sorry, but yeah, um, so it's just in the dog. Who <laughs> thinks I'm here to give her attention? So yeah, it's just just a little bit shorter than. So yeah, it's just a little bit shorter than the dress itself. I think the others are even a little bit shorter. So all right, there's apron number one. Let's try apron number two. So yeah, this is a little bit shorter. I actually kind of like this length. I think this is a good length. I'm going to move this up while I do the penny bit. These are probably not the pins I would use, but it's what I had available. Alright, there we go. I think that'd be a very nice cooking apron. Just if I, something splashes, it's not gonna get my dress at least. But yeah, it's nice again, quite full. Um, this is actually, I made it a little bit wider. I don't think I really meant to, but that's just kind of how the pleating situation worked out. So I can wipe on the sides here or in the front. Uh, yeah, I use my aprons a lot for like grabbing pans and such too, which you're not really supposed to do that, but that's what I do. So yeah. And I would actually really like this one with this dress. It looks really nice. Yeah, apron number two. I need to go to number three. I gotta find number three. This one 
didn't end up being taller. I don't know how that happened. I used the same pattern. Interesting. But yeah, basically the same exact thing. This one's, I think, a little bit longer than the other one, so I actually had a fabric to do a pin or apron, and I wasn't sure about the brown one, but um, yeah, this is going to be a nice apron for like clean work. This is going to get dirty very quickly, so uh, this is going to be for non-dirty employments. But yeah, it kind of falls, or it's not at the sides, but I guess I should have showed you the sides of the other ones too, but I didn't think about that. Yeah, that, aprons are always super easy and super quick. They don't take very long, even when sewing them completely by hand. Um, it really isn't that bad. So, when that worked, I'll put it down so you can see a little bit better. Yeah, that is basically apron number three. So now I have aprons to go do work in the 30s and 40s whenever I have those type of events. So that was actually a very easy project. Even all three of them didn't take me very long. I got um, the brown and the white ones done. I know I see you want attention. I had the brown and the white ones done uh, in an afternoon. And I think I spent an evening on the blue ones. So it really didn't take very long at all. It just, um, sometimes just is getting motivated to do a project. But yeah, that is basically the apron. Yeah, you're the reason that there's black hair all over my apron, isn't there? Yeah, you're that reason. It's okay. See, there's a, there's a lady here. And there's a lady here. And here's another one. Yeah, you're the reason. You're the reason. Yeah. I had to wash this apron before I use it now. Yeah, that's how that works. Okay. Hi. Can you see where we got a sensor going on? Hi. Now we have all the pets in here. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot to say about aprons just because I mean, they're simple aprons, but um, they're easy, they're fast. Um, Super simple projects you've never sewn before. This is a great way to start because there's there's really no skill involved, especially if you pleat or you can just like gather that up. That's fine too. I like pleating. Pleating is a lot easier for me, so it takes a lot less time. But you know, some people like teaching better, so that that works too. Or gathering. So I'm gonna pick dog hair off of this. I'm just gonna wash it this side. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the apron. Three little linen aprons. And the linen. I do like linen. Linen is really nice to work with. It's easy to sew through. It, um, it's just nice. You know, when it gets damp, it doesn't feel wet. It just feels cool. So it like works wonders for chemises and that sort of thing. But um, it's very hard wearing. And so I think for aprons, it's going to last a lot longer than say a cotton would. Uh, three little aprons. I tend to use all three aprons. I, there's a reason I did three aprons. So I am one of those people, I get dirty pretty quickly and I like to change out for a fresh apron. But yeah, so I like to use an apron for a while and when it gets dirty, change out for a fresh one. And so I probably will use all three of them throughout an event, um, possibly even wash one and reuse it. So um, that's just my personal preference. I don't think I could get away with one apron. I actually have a cotton apron too that was completely hand sewn, so it very well could be used for 30s as well. Um, that was a cotton homespun that I um, made an apron out of several years ago, and that's a half apron. So I have two pinner aprons, two half aprons that could be used for 30s. So four aprons all together, but we just made three the linen ones on the channel today. So, but yeah, that was a very quick, easy project, and I very much enjoyed it. Glad to get them done. It's something that can go, go away, and I don't have to deal with the fabric and the stash anymore. So, yeah, that was that. That worked out really well. So. Thank you so much for joining me today uh, as we made some lovely little linen aprons. Have a great week and I will see you back here on Monday.